It finally happened today. I kind of figured it would do. The anime season has lapped me. Episodes 2 of shows I'm reviewing today have already started airing, but thankfully I've not watched them yet, so I won't be letting them spoil my opinions of shows I look at today. But what do you think of the shows I'm looking at today? Let me know in the comments. And remember to like, comment and subscribe to this and my other videos if you like what you see here as well, of course. Because this is a 2023 winter anime preview from a different perspective. First up today, we've got Chilling in My 30s After Getting Fired from a Demon King's Army. An anime I'm, I'm immediately empathising with quite a bit, because I'm also chilling in my 30s, just reviewing anime. Not been fired yet, thankfully. Of course, not for the Demon King's Army. But anyway, Chilling in My 30s is an anime about a guy who is formerly a part of a Demon King's Army, and for various reasons, namely because he's pretty weak, he ends up having lost his job, gets kicked out of Demon's Army, has to go and fend for himself from the wilds. Now, having lived with demons all his life, he doesn't want to really look to living with humans because he knows that humans and demons don't get on very well. He definitely doesn't want to become an adventurer because, again, he can't adventure as a demon because he'd be immediately outed as a demon and he'd be killed. When he finds himself wandering alone, comes across a beautiful, busty young woman called Marika. Make out to name with Dario, if you have not said that already. And he inadvertently saves Marika from this beast, this thing is a gorilla. Marika is thankful, takes him to a village. He basically starts living with villagers. He becomes an adventurer anyway because apparently he isn't a demon. He's just been living with demons all his life, didn't realise he wasn't a demon. And it turns out he's super powerful. This is another show from the new genre, which is kind of expanded from the whole isekai genre as in kicked out of a hero's party there's about half a dozen shows like that these days which have got the same theme but this is a step aside from that again this is now kicked out of the demon king's army while in kicked out of a hero's party and it's going to be about Dario being overpowered uh, staring at Marika's bountiful tracts of land and just living his best life now as a normal human being chilling in his 30s after being fired from a demon king's army what more can you say than that? The show itself is relatively throwaway. There's nothing truly awe-inspiring in it, except for Marika's aforementioned breasts. The Demon King's army seem okay. I mean, they're a bit mid-bossy, but you'd expect that from the Demon King's army. The Demon King himself is a new guy. Uh, apparently, the Demon King's father is the one who cared for Daryl, and obviously Demon King's son doesn't care for Daryl, so it kicks him out. But it's definitely going to be one of those more I'm overpowered, I'm going to live a normal life doing normal things rather than killing demon anime. There's going to be some trials and tribulations here and there. It's mostly going to be about Dario and Marika just living and being people. If you are interested in watching Chilling My 30s, this one's airing over at Crunchyroll. And next up, we do have an isekai series. We got the, again longly named, Saving 80,000 Gold in Another World from My Retirement. An anime where a girl is transported to another world and starts capitalism. In fact, I've started calling this one colloquially Isekai Capitalism for that very reason. But as we introduce our main character, Mitsuha, she is being pushed off a cliff by some thugs. I think they're trying to assault her. Makes up in a field in another world in, in the middle of nowhere. She eventually finds her way towards a village but faints on lack of food and is saved by this young girl. Colette, who takes her back to her village and carry her back to health. Now, as the episode progresses, we learn that Mitsuha is, kind of, is not so much a dropout from school, but she didn't earn the grade she needed to go to the next college up. And so she's now living based on the savings left over from her dead parents, but can only really survive for so long, and she doesn't really have any future in prospects. Thankfully, she got the most useful advice possible, the advice of her elder brother, Tsuyoshi, who is always popping in a true your classic anime geek with a plaid shirt and glasses and figures and all and posters all over his room, giving her words of advice how to survive if you are isekai. And who takes it to heart, she manages to survive. Turns out she's actually been imbued with the power of a god, or part of the power of a god anyway, as Amaneko Neko 
turns up to her and says, look, you've been given power to transport yourself wherever you want to go. You just have a picture of where you want to be. And so she finds herself being able to transfer, transport between our world and another world. And rather than to say, okay, I'm going to live out my life out of this other world, I live my life out on our world, she just does what any good old entrepreneur should do. She says, there's money to be made in this. I'm going to save money and retire. And so it's going to be an anime of her learning a sort of world, but also bringing stuff over from our world into that world to sell, to manufacture, to revolutionise that world. And all the profit she gets on that world, she's going to bring back over to our world to invest in bringing new stuff over to that world. It, like I said, capitalism home. Ragatia, the fantastic video game, uh, if I remember, I'm going to put a screenshot up there somewhere. Probably a bit point around it, if I remember. But anyway, Ragatia or Westatia is a fantastic game, and I cannot think of anything else other than that game while watching this anime. She's a cute girl who's got reasons to make money, and she does so, and it's, like I say, capitalism home. If you do want to watch Isekai Capitalism, you can find it airing over at Crunchyroll. Next today, we've got The Tale of Outcasts, or as I'm going to be referring to it as in future, A Cutie and the Beast. As this is an anime about a cute orphan girl, Wisteria, in historic London, living in an orphanage, and begging on the streets for any money she can get. She's being abused, frankly not in that way, by the priest of the orphanage, who's sending her out begging her. It's basically Oliver Twist stuff, just with a cute, silver-haired orphan. Although Wisteria's got a secret, she's got a, a little secret friend which nobody else can see. We've got the demon Marbus, who is this weird, beastly lion of a man, but nobody else can see him, only Wisteria can. Now, he seems just seems bored with life. Nobody can see him. I mean, he's got a human form which people can see, but is disturbed by the fact that whenever he does that form, he just gets to approached by loads and loads of women. And that doesn't sound too bad to me, but clearly he is not impressed by the idea. And so Wisteria chats with Marbess over at nights. Marbess tells her stories. To him, she's just a distraction. To her, he's a, a friend she can thrust her life out to and gives her hope, gives him something to do. It's just a give and take relationship on both sides. On the side of this, you've got two demon hunters going around. One of the demon hunters is blatantly Wisteria's missing brother. And they're involved a bit, um, I think they go to look for Wisteria, or well, Snow does anyway. They can't find her, and so kind of like goes on looking elsewhere. But they're mainly, mainly there to fight demons. Like Marbass, of course, I'm sure that's going to come up later on in the anime, no doubt. But as you expect, Wisteria is sold to a rich guy who just wants to care for her and love her as, her own, as his own daughter. Well, that's a big fat lie. He's not actually being wanted to be the uh, father figure of this cute, silver-haired cutie. He wants to basically do um, things which are going to get videos demonetized to her. Not risk the video is monetized. I do this out of a cut way um, of doing these videos. But if you do want to leave me a like or a subscribe, I always appreciate it. Or just check me out on Twitch and follow or subscribe there as well. That's definitely appreciated if you do want to do that. But anyway. He wants to, he buys, he buys her in order to torture her and do other things to, to her. And she tries to run away. When Marbas learns of this, he comes running and tries to save a day. But one thing which I mentioned earlier on in the anime, when a demon helps a human, they break the rules and they lose themselves. They disintegrate, they, they crack and they die. The only way a demon can help a human is if there's a contract there. And... Wisteria's got nothing except her life to contract Marbas with, and Marbas doesn't want that. However, Wisteria does have something she can offer, and in the last second she offers her one thing which will keep her alive and contract her with Marbas. Her eyes. Her, the same eyes which allow her to see him. Now, we didn't, obviously Marbas then kills a bad guy and the demon is contracted with and takes Wisteria away. This sets her story up to be an interesting... I mean, there's a reason why I called it a start, Cutie and Beast. Because with Sue is obviously a cutie, Marbas is a beast. It's going to be about their close relationship. It, would it be... I mean, it's got to be a father figure relationship. I hope it's not a normal type of relationship. I mean, with Sue is only a girl. But about them travelling together, learning each other, and travelling the world. A blind girl and a demon. It's definitely got me intrigued. It's not the type of anime I would normally watch, and 
I'll be honest, I probably won't end up watching this one either because it's it's a busy season. I'm 32 episodes and 10 days. That's insane. But this one, if you do like this type of show, definitely catch it up. De definitely watch it because this one is pretty decent. Like I say, it's not for me, but it could be for you. If you are interested in watching Cutie and Beast, you can find it airing over at Crunchyroll. Finally today, we've got yet another isekai. We've got Handyman Saito in another world. This is an anime about a handyman called Saito in another world. I don't really need to say any more than that really. It's about just a guy called Saito who gets transported to another world and ends up fighting in a party as their thief. Although he's not really much of a thief, he's more of a lockpick. See, Handyman Saito is a traditional classic handyman. He can do odd jobs, bashing out dents in cars, or in this case helmets, opening locks for people who lock themselves out the door, or treasure chests and dungeons. Just various little things, like creating little backpacks here and there, little bits of things and there. He's good with numbers, good with his hands, just a nice guy really. And of course you got this handyman with all these unique skills, which come in very useful in a fantasy style dungeon crawling adventure. So much so he finds himself on a party with a warrior girl, Melza, a cute little healer fairy, Lafapon, and a senile old wizard, Morlock. We see a few other characters here, like a dwarf with a little puppy, a pair of adventurers, including what's effectively Rintosak or Vaginomus Badass Act, and a bunch of other stuff here and there, including a merchant, a trickster. And this is an interesting premise, just a normal guy just doing handyman jobs just in a fantasy world. But where this anime lets itself down is there's no real plot here. It's little vignettes. It's, it's almost like a clip show. You get a little cute story where something happens, somebody does something, and runs a punchline. Suddenly you get another clip. Of, there's no connection between... Obviously the characters build up their personalities through these little vignettes, but there's no story. And as good as the animation and the jokes and the characters are, it, if it can't keep me interested, it's not going to be a show I'm going to be watching frequently. I'm not going to be going back to it to find out what happened next. Because I know what's going to happen next. I'm going to get five or six little vignettes of little short stories about a handyman unlocking a, a door in a dungeon or Lafapan taking money off over seeing our old wizard again for hitting his back or or we've seen our wizard and Murloc suddenly finding himself amongst the zombie hordes because he thinks he's a zombie and he's dead because he's seen her. Or whales are being cute and in love with Saito and just getting embarrassed and not wanting to show it. There's only so many ways you can show that same story without it getting stale. And that's my big boy about this show. It, it seems good from episode one. I enjoyed it, but I don't see where it's going. I might go back for a ride. It, like I say, there's nothing bad about the show. I can't say anything bad about it other than the fact that it's got lack of future for me. But if you do want to watch it, you can find it airing over at Crunchyroll. So that was chilling in my 30s after getting fired from a Demon King's army, saving 80,000 gold in another world from my retirement, a tale of outcasts, and Handyman Saito in another world. Four shows with interesting titles, which I'll review today. Let me know what you think in the comments, and join me next time. Until then, bye bye.